Hello folks, Simon here, welcome back to the channel. And it's been quite a while since I've actually got my DJI Mini 2 into the sky, at least six months. So I'm very excited to do so again today and just have a look around to see what's changed with the drone. There's been a few app updates and firmware updates since I last did fly. And many of those update notes included stability improvements and what have you. But there's also been a couple of new features I wanna have a look at as well. And if you are new to the channel, please do consider subscribing for future drone content. Without any further ado, let's take off. Right, here we go then. It's nice to be back up in the air. Yeah, last year I did hear some horror stories about the batteries for the DJI Mini 2 just going completely to pot once the drone hasn't been used and everything's been stuck in storage. Well, my batteries have been in storage for a long time and I'm glad to say that everything seems to be okay. I've checked them out, there's no swelling. They all seem to be functioning correctly. And we'll go to about 25 meters as we just start to have a look at some of the functions here that have been updated since I have in fact last flown. Let's just angle across a little bit so we can see the country. Okay, right, so if we open the options then, there's a couple of things that I do want to address. Uh, first of all, if we head over to the control and then just scroll down here to advanced gimbal settings. No, not advanced gimbal settings, I beg your pardon. It's actually right down here to advanced, that's it. One of the features that has been added is the ability to adjust the EXP. Now, when I first read about this, I thought EXP had something to do with exposure. I mean, it makes sense, right? But in fact, it doesn't. What it does have to do with are the control sticks on the RC. And effectively, how sensitive they are, or rather how sensitive the drone is when you move these. Now, you can see that the current default values are set there to throttle down, rudder left and backward left. And there's actually a warning message, which for some reason I can't quite scroll the page down to show you, it won't let me do that. But effectively that warning message says, don't touch these settings unless you really need to, or you know what you're doing. And I don't, there's actually some videos up on YouTube, not by me, but of folks that have you know, fiddled about with these settings and that has led to having accidents with their drone. Now, the reason this feature was actually implemented, as far as I understand, was that the Mavic 3, which was recently released out of the box, was very, very sensitive with this controller and some people were unfortunately crashing their drones because the sensitivity was so much higher on that particular model than it was, for example, on the Mini 2. So DJI put this update out so that those settings can be modified. But that's the setting I wanted to talk about. I don't want to change it because, well, it is my first flight in six months. I don't really know what I'm doing with it. And to be honest with you, it's not really a feature I feel like I need, but it is there, it is a new feature. So I did want to mention it for you guys. As I can feel a little bit of a breeze, I'm only gonna be flying over the fields today. So I'd rather not lose my drone on the first flight back. So I did manage to take the drone to about 110 meters there, and I wasn't getting any wind warnings, which is encouraging, but I'll drop that down now as we don't need to be that high. That was more of a test than anything else. Now, as you can see, we're looking a little bit exposed right now in our image, and that gives me another opportunity to explain how an already existing feature has somewhat been adjusted in the last update. Just to clarify, when I last flew, I think we were on 1.4.1 or 0.2 if I remember correctly. Might have been a bit more than that, but we've since upgraded to 1.5.4. 
And on top of that, the firmware for the aircraft itself has been updated, along with the up, uh, firmware for the controller as well. So quite a bit has changed since I've last flown. If we head back over to the control menu, then what you can do is customize the function button on your controller a little more than you could before. Now, I've never really changed these settings, so I'm not 100% sure what is new here, but you can see there's a whole bunch of new functions here that have been updated in the recent updates. Now, uh, the Android app was very lacking in comparison to the iOS app in this particular area. So it's nice to see that everything's been brought uniform across the board for both versions of the app, iOS and Android. So for example, since we're a little bit overexposed, one thing I could do is actually increase the EV, apply that to the function and also decrease the EV. Okay, and so now by simply tapping the function or double tapping in this case, Oh, I accidentally singled. I'll tell you what, my hands are so cold here. You can see at the bottom right, the EV has been increased by plus 0 0.3. But if I can try and double tap here with a cold thumb, there you go, it's been reduced by 0 0.3. And again, and now what this is, the EV value is the exposure value. And this only works when your exposure settings are in auto mode but it effectively allows you to make a little bit of an adjustment, a manual adjustment, when you're in an over or under exposed shot. So if I double tap this again, it goes down to minus 0.7. It's not a huge adjustment, but you can do this as many times as you need. And it's just one of the things, one of the uh, options that you can set to that function button. Yeah, we have a little national forest close to this location, Woodland Trust. Very popular for dog walkers, as you can imagine, but it's open to all. And one other new development since I've last flown the DJI Mini 2 that's come to fruition, something that I was even hoping for back in the day, but has only happened recently, is the fact that the SDK pack for the Mini 2 has now been released. Now this is currently only for the Android devices, but I believe an, a release of the SDK pack for the iPhone or for the iOS devices is coming around March time. Now, here's the thing, the SDK pack effectively allows third-party app developers to develop their own software for the DJI Mini 2. And this is an exciting development because there's a lot of features that people have been hoping for with the Mini 2 that have never been made available in the official DJI Fly app. For example, active tracking amongst other features as well. And what that means is then for flying is that rather than flying with the DJI Fly app, you'll be flying with another unofficial piece of software, but with some of those additional features. Maybe we can check some of those out and maybe you guys have done already. If so, let us know down below. So I have brought the drone back now. We're down to 33% battery life and it is a little bit chilly today. We're at about one degree, which is certainly cold for me. I'm feeling the effects. I'm sure the Mini 2 is as well. But as I said, it has been nice to get the Mini 2 back into the air and I'm looking forward to really pushing it through its paces over the coming weeks. And I do have quite a bit of content planned going forward. almost the perfect landing. Just before I pack up for the day then, I do want to mention the fact that the DJI Mini 3 is almost certainly going to be announced in the coming weeks. We're at that stage now where the leaks and the rumours have been present as they have been for all the other previous drones by DJI just before the initial announcement or the official announcement by them. So I would expect that relatively soon. And I'm definitely intrigued to see just how the DJI Mini 3 is going to improve upon this fantastic little drone. The Mini 2 
has been out now for over a year and it's still one of the best consumer drones in my opinion. And of course the Mini 3 is also going to want to pack whatever features it can under 250 grams. But I hope you guys have enjoyed this little first flight back from me here on the channel. If you have, maybe consider dropping a like. That does support the YouTube channel, so I appreciate those of you who do so. And if you are new, don't forget to subscribe for future content. Take care, everyone. I'll see you next time.